Meow, 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 fintech, maybe anything is correction soon. Hey everybody, Cantonese Cat here. I want to show you a few charts here. First off, I'm going to talk about SoFi. It's been an incredibly humbling stock. It has done absolutely nothing for a whole year. A lot of people got really excited when the price went from like $4 all the way up to double digits. A lot of people end up getting trapped over here. And price has just done absolutely nothing for the entire year and just been ranging between the zone here. So what do I see with SoFi? First of all, I want to show you something that is important to pay attention to. On the daily, there's like no wells left. There's no momentum. Again, there's no surprise here, right? Doesn't mean that momentum won't shift all of a sudden really soon. No, I mean, look over here back in like December, November 2022, there's like no wells here at all whatsoever, forming a little bit of like a W bottom over here, kind of like what it's doing right now. All it takes just um, some volume to kick in and some wells to come in. Next thing you know, it can pump all the way from like four bucks over to like eight bucks. It doubled literally within like just a couple months, right? So on the daily chart, I'm not that concerned about having no whales. There is one thing that is very interesting is that the daily Bollinger Band is squeezing pretty hard. Now, when you have a Bollinger Band squeezing very hard, it generally tells you that a bigger move is coming pretty soon, either to the upside or the downside. If you ask me which way it's going to go, I don't think anybody can really tell you exactly which way it's going to go. But I do think that we're ranging from here. This is the bottom of the range. This is the top of the range. I do think that we're at the bottom of the range. We're following some pretty solid bottoms over here. It looks like it's maybe getting ready to bounce. The reason why I say this is because the volume has just been really, really kind of declining on these downtrends. And it looks like we're kind of consolidating over here, maybe finding a good bottom here, ready to bounce, right? The, again, the daily just squeeze right here can kind of precipitate potentially bigger moves and it's, keep, it's squeezing pretty hard. It's not just the daily. You don't see the same squeeze here on the two-day chart. It's getting pretty squeezy. Even on the weekly, it's getting really squeezy. You know, it's not that squeezy, but it's getting pretty squeezy. So it's really telling that a, a bigger move is most likely about to come. It's been directionless for quite some time. It's just been hugging the 20-day moving average, which is the orange line over here for a very long time. It's been hugging the 40-day moving average here for a very long time. It's been hugging the 20-week moving average over here for a very long time, which if you pull up the Buaka support band, which incorporates the 20-week moving average, it's been hugging, hugging, hugging. It's just been kind of underneath this 20-week moving average, underneath Buaka support band here for quite some time. It's not really doing anything. There aren't that many whales here that have been slowly kind of just dribbling and there's been a lot more, you know, kind of retail presence over here. So the stock's not going to pump until you're really able to get rid of some of these retail and you're really going to start having these whales to kind of come in, right? That still hasn't quite happened quite just yet for SoFi, if it was going to happen. But I do want to point out a very important thing is you do see more whales over here compared to back in November, December 2022, before these huge moves, right? Sometimes consolidation is just that, it's just consolidation. But right now is essentially directionless. It's not up, it's not down, it's just going sideways. And it's very, very boring. And a lot of people are looking at other things that are pumping and they feel like they're missing the rally on everything else. That's kind of what we're dealing with here. Now, looking at the monthly chart, the 20 month moving average is pointing up. Right now, price is below the 20 month moving average. I don't think it's going to serve as very, very strong resistance here because it's still pointing up. And so far, we've only had a few days of trading day. It looks like we got a very, very nice kind of hammer bottom look over here for the monthly, which generally is uh, leaning a little bit more bullish for SoFi, although there's still another like 20 more trading days or something like that. Um, the whales are not really, you know, leaving. They're not really coming in. It's just kind of going sideways. And it's just been like that for a very, very long time. Now, if I look at the Ichimoku cloud, I'll tell you, in, you know, more indicators tell you that we're really directionless. We have gone through this bull trend over here to the point that we were able to get the bullish ticket kitchen cross, but we're unable to flip the ticket and kitchen from resistance to support to go up higher. We need to do that before we're really able to do anything. 
if you're able to break into like the eight dollar range probably gonna end up getting some resistance over here because that's where the tank and the kitchen are located but we need to at least get back to the eight dollar range to kind of challenge some of these things over here hopefully break through back test it as support and go up higher right that's the that's the goal that's the hope for this stock but right now again very much directionless so i show you a lot of these indicator i tell you that it's directionless so what's the point of all this i would like to tell you what the point is all of all this is if i instead of showing you these indicators i was just showing you earlier if i pull up the gan as well as the fibonacci level it's going i think it's going to tell you a little bit more about what sofi is doing if you pull up the gan and fibonacci level and fibonacci level is going to draw as a, an exponential fibonacci level from the all-time high over here around 28 dollars to the all-time low here around 4.2 dollars you can see that these Fibonacci level has been very well respected it's just been ranging for a whole year between the 0 0.5 and the 0 0.236 bam 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 right and then meanwhile if you superimpose a best fit GAN square chart on here oops you can see that it's been really respecting these arcs very well really since around the all-time bottom over here it's just been trying to break arc and unable to break through came back here found some support from some of these angles back down here and it's just been breaking arc and breaking arc and it's just been stuck between these two arcs over here was able to finally able to break inside the arc and it's been kind of oscillating within this arc over here and then finally finding confluent support over here at this horizontal line over here as well as the 0 0.236 you know, Fibonacci level around 6.6. .6. It's been hitting us a very, very good support level over here so far. So far we have a couple of, um, I'm going to zoom this in in case because the screen's probably really small if you're looking at it on your phone or something like that, you probably won't be able to see anything. So far we got two nice hammer candles over here for weekly. These are generally some pretty nice bottoming kind of behavior. And you can also see that this um, ham these hammers also kind of along the line of this very nice angle over here that also is able to find support back here from this big giant move down here around May of 2023 before this next parabolic move up, right? There's a lot of confluence over here. At the bottom of the range, what do you do? You should probably buy. I mean, there's no financial advice, but just logically speaking, if it's going to range around over here, you should probably sell the top of the range and buy the bottom of the range. And right now it's at the bottom of the range. And right now you have some really, really nice work here telling you that there's a lot of demand down here in the zone. And so far it also fits the Fibonacci level, also fits the GAN in terms of the arc, in terms of the horizontal line over here, and in terms of this angle over here. So a lot of confluence over here right now, this building a lot of energy. And remember what I was telling you about on the daily, right? If I show you the daily chart, what was going to happen? Well, the Bollinger Band is squeezing pretty tight. There might be a big move that's coming. Which way is going to go? It might depend on what the rest of the fintech stock is doing. It might depend depend on what the macroeconomic environment is. Um, by that, I don't mean rates. I don't really give a crap about that. I'm more talking about global liquidity. It depends on what global liquidity is doing, and um, it might help you kind of pick a direction afterwards. I think I'm, I'm leaning that is going to go up, although this stock has just been absolutely brutalized and a lot of the indicators are not really telling you exactly what it's going to do. But based on what I'm seeing over here, I think we might be getting close to trying to break about this arc that we're trying to spend really for a whole year trying to break about this arc. We have not been able to do so. Is this time going to be a charm? Once we get to around you know 7.2, you're going to see some resistance here. Are we going to end up breaking through that? Maybe. If you break through that, what's going to happen after that? Well, the next resistance is going to be around $8. Right? You break through $8, then we'll talk more about you know some of the higher targets up here, which is going to be around 11 which we challenged back over in July of 2023. And after that, it's going to be close to 14 14 is a very, very confluent zone. It serves very, very strong support over here until it didn't. You know, throughout the entire year of 2021. So 14 is probably going to be another you know battle zone over here. But if we end up getting to 14 from where we're at right now, you you're basically doubling the stock, right? So 
I'm um, done talking about SoFi. It's been a long time talking about SoFi. I'm going to go for a couple other fintech stocks here. I do have a stake in this stock here called The Firm. This is also one of my top 20 positions. I'm going to hide the GAN here. And I'm going to basically just show you, like, looking very, very similar to SoFi. You got a little bit of like a tweezer bottom, two nice wick over here. These are generally very nice bottoms that you see. Could this be the bottom? It could be because it's hitting the top of the Ichimoku cloud. The cloud is thin, it could drop down, but I like the fact that this whole big giant drop over here is on declining volume, and this whole big giant move up right here are on increasing volume throughout the entire way going up to like the 50s, right? So I think that we most likely have bottomed, and there's a lot of sellers that have been exhausted. All it takes just a little bit of volume to come in, and next thing you know, price can end up just pumping up a lot higher. And we're at a very, very nice confluent you know, um, support zone over here. You can see that the cloud has basically been served as resistance over here, resistance over here. We're able to finally break above the cloud here on high volume. And right now it's just doing a like six month low volume back test on the top of the cloud. So far we're finding support. We'll see whether or not we bounce from here. If not, it breaks underneath the cloud, you know, on high volume, then I'd be a lot more concerned, but is there any sign that's gonna do that? No, because volume throughout the entire downtrend over here for the last six months has been on declining volume. So a lot of people who end up getting in the stock over here has been extremely brutalized for about half a year and probably losing faith. You have so much fear and FUD in terms of what the um, macroeconomics rates and all that crap that people like feed into your head. Um, but that's not what the whales are doing. The whales look like they buy, they, they accumulate it down here to the point that they get to, they got tired and they stop accumulating and you're gonna see what the bears are doing. Um, over the last six months and the bears have actually just been absolutely pathetic. It's, it's formed like a big giant bull flag over here. At the monthly, you can see this beautiful bull flag over here in more detail. You can see that the, the volume of this giant bull flag over here is on declining volume. You can see how pathetic the bears have been. You know, if I also just pull out the Ichimoku cloud, there are initially some supports over here. We had a bullish cross in Tekken Kijun over in April. Price fell underneath both of the Tekken and Kijun for the May, uh, month of May of 2024, but we're able to kind of break back above the Kenjin right here so far. And so far, it looks like we might be forming a, you know, potentially a pretty decent bottom over here. It's, um, you know, nice looking hammerish kind of looking thing. Again, there's only been like a few days of trading here for the month of June, but so far looking pretty decent. Got back above the Kenjin. Next up is kind of going to be the tanking up here on the monthly. It's going to be around 34 point two or so and if we're able to break back above that use that as support then you're talking about bouncing up to the higher targets which could potentially be you're really talking about like you know challenging the 50s here again but after that you're really talking about like the 90s that's going to be where the next level is going to be at um, but in japan you know, you know not really telling you too much we initially have expansion now you have a little bit of contraction over here but i just want to show you like the last time i see that you have the huge run up and then five really pathetic down candle down hold over here the next one up it, it's pretty powerful you know where i saw this ad and i and i posted this to on x in terms of the comparison i have seen this with another stock that you should be very familiar with called amd i saw a very, very similar pattern we have five very pathetic bearish candle down here couldn't even break this candle over here you have like a rising five pattern bam meh, 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 meh. bam 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 right could the same thing happen to the firm uh, you know depending on whether or not global liquidity continue to rise which it seems like it is whether or not u.s liquidity also seems to be rising which i think it is Right now, this could be the reversal point that we might be looking for. We'll see. The month is still early. Maybe it's not. Maybe it keeps going down another six month, seven month, eight month to the tw to the mid twenties. Anything's possible. I'm not sure it's going to end up doing that though. A couple other things I want to show you. I'm going to pull up the can here that I did. And if you just basically look at that, as well as looking at the Fibonacci levels that I've drawn here from this all time high over here to the all time low. You can see there's a lot of confluence in terms of Fibonacci level in the game that I drew. It's been basically just trying to break from arc to arc, right? Got rejected with arc here initially. You eventually was able to break above this arc over here. And it got rejected by this arc, blue arc over here initially. You eventually was able to break above the arc. When it breaks above, went to gravitate over to the next arc up above. 
and it had a hard time initially breaking in. It was able to finally break inside the arc and it's just been kind of going down the arc, break back above the arc, got rejected or was on his own, kind of squeezing between the range of this, you know, downward arc here and the horizontal zone over here. So surprise has to break back about like 39 or 40 or so before you're really talk, able to talk about, you know, maybe rechallenging some of the levels up here around the 50s. But then after it gets through that, you might really be talking about like the 90s here in a, in a hurry. Um, that That's kind of what I'm seeing here overall. Like if you put up the volume shelf, um, once you're able to break back about 50, you know, I guess there's a little bit of volume over here in the 60s, but after that, you're really talking about like the 90s, which is also confluent with this Fibonacci level here in 0 0.76. So that is a firm. If you're going to look over at, um, actually, oh, one more thing I want to show you on the weekly chart on the firm. In addition to the um, Ichimoku cloud, I'm going to turn off this again over here. In addition to the Ichimoku cloud, you also see that it's finding good support here at the 50 week moving average that is pointing up and that's where it's finding support at mostly right and if you also pull up the bull market support band it's stuck in a range between the 15 week moving average and the bull market support band we'll see which way it breaks above you know but again declining volume has been so pathetic all it takes just a little bit of volume to potentially break back above for a price to go up a lot higher that's a firm the um other river song i want to talk about real quick is sq i'm not going to spend too much time here on sq um, SQ is actually looking very similar, finding support at 50 week moving average and stuck between the range between the bond support band and the 50 week over here. Um, I'm going to turn off the weekly moving average. I'm just going to show you one thing that I think um, Square or SQ most likely has bottom, which is the weekly Ichimoku cloud. Looks like we have a break out of this Ichimoku cloud and we're basically just back testing it right now. So far, it looks like it's been serving as really good support. And so far, everything seems to be lining up because I have posted this pattern over here called the broadening descending wedge, which generally is a bullish pattern whenever it breaks out of it. And I really drew this wedge over here around October 2023 and it looks like pattern has really worked out very, very perfectly. Finally got, you know, initially got rejected over here, trying to find some support over here before bouncing up further, probably end up back testing it and go a lot higher, right? That's what I'm seeing. And if you also look at the, not just the weekly HMO cloud, you also look at the monthly HMO cloud, you also see something very, very nice here, which is the price for back above the Tenkin line over here right now is just basically back testing the support. It's very nice that you see a confluence over here on monthly and weekly with support in it. And this whole um, thing right here is also back testing this very big volume shelf over here. And so far it's finding support. So the next price, if it ends up pushing back above, it's going to challenge the top of the um, volume shelf over here, which is also going to be the top of this descending broadening wedge over here around the 80s. If you're able to break back above this wedge over here, the next target you're really talking about 100, which you have to, um, you know, which you have some price history up here as well, you know, like around 100, and then above that it's going to be around 130, which again you have some price history over here as well. So it's actually pretty simple in terms of what it's doing so far. It's forming relatively more higher highs than, and higher lows rather than lower highs and lower lows. So it's really developing a little bit of bull trend over here. And it's also a very critical support, both in terms of the monthly Ichimoku cloud, the weekly Ichimoku cloud, as well as the volume shelf. That's what Square is doing. If, if I was to enter this stock, I think this probably would be a very good location to enter. Another one I want to talk about real quick is PayPal. PayPal has been looking better and better. It's been actually doing what you expect, exa exactly what you expect. This is the weekly Ichimoku cloud. It looks like it broke into the Ichimoku cloud over here around the uh, month of March of 2024. And since then, it's just been oscillating between the cloud over here, trying to find our direction. The next move, if it ends up doing so, it would be gravitate to the top of the cloud over here around 70. It could break back above and maybe even back test the cloud before going higher, but that process could still take some time. It doesn't necessarily have to be that fast. Again, 
um, PayPal, in addition to the weekly cloud, is breaking in, which is promising. It hasn't really done that for a very, 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 very long time. It's finally breaking inside a weekly cloud, which is a promising development. If you look at the weeklies and other, uh, sorry, look at the monthly, another very important development has also happened, which is it flipped the Tenkin line over here from resistance to support. And it back tested the support last month. It held, and right now we're back above of it. We are also on top of this volume shelf over here, and the next price is going to end up gravitate up towards the volume shelf up above, which is going to be around maybe like the mid 70s. Interestingly, the Kijun is also coming down, and it's also around the same level. So most likely it's going to end up going up here to the 70s, but you might end up having some resistance up here. It might end up having another few months to kind of try to break above the 70s before bringing it up higher. And this is what I'm seeing with PayPal. There's nothing really excruciatingly wrong about PayPal. If anything, I think the chart is actually looking more and more bullish. If I just pull the Bollinger Band up here on the monthly, you can see that price is really trying to challenge the 20 month moving average and Bollinger Band is really squeezing here. So I would like to see it get back about the 20 month moving average and go up from here. And I'd like to see the Bollinger Band squeezing to end up becoming expansion with the 20 month moving average really pointing up. And that's when you know you're really starting at the beginning of a very nice bull trend. It still hasn't been happening yet, but it looks like it's in the process of doing so. I want to talk about two other stocks here real quick, and I'm going to call it a day. One is Upstart. Upstart actually is, uh, initially I looked, looked at this, I, I thought this is like a poor man's um, SoFi. But so far for the month of um, May, it's actually looking more bullish than SoFi. SoFi hasn't even really been trying to touch the 20 month moving average quite just yet whereas upstart is doing it but again it's at resistance right so we'll see how it goes but it, right now is looking like it wants to challenge a 20 month moving average that is really starting to possibly slope right now and so far the volume of these kind of uh, up volume over here as opposed to the down volume over here with declining volume over here over the last few months of this downtrend looks like we're picking up some you know pretty decent volume here potentially push above the 20 month moving average use as support and bounce up higher that's what now um, upstarts looking like to me now it, in the Ichimoku cloud the monthly it doesn't look as um, bullish as sofi unfortunately and also on the weekly here it looks very very similar to sofi um, so there's really not a whole lot of things to kind of you know talk about here with the exception that it looks very similar to sofi some things look better some things look worse but it looks like it's trying and it's also got a little bit of um, nice you know kind of hammer candles over here it looks like there's a lot more demand that's coming and it looks like it, it might end up building up a potential smaller time frame bull trend to kind of push up a lot higher over time right it also looks like it's trying to challenge the bull market support band over here as well so far as we got back above of it but we'll see whether or not we're able to sustain that but that's upstart like there are some more bullish things that are happening with that one last stock i want to talk about and i'll leave you be and this is going to be one of those stocks that looks very very bullish which is NU, NU Holdings. This looks like Bitcoin. I don't have anything else to say about it. This looks just like Bitcoin. If you look at the weekly candles, this week looks like a very, very nice hammer. This looks like a very, very bullish look. And I think this correction over here had to happen because it was previous all time high and it couldn't just break back above. You know, it went way too far, way too fast away from the bull market support band. It just needed to kind of cool off for a couple of months, which it did on low volume right now you have increasing volume over here looks like it wants to really go for an uptrend it the, the stock is so strong that it couldn't even touch the bull market support band it just wants to keep going higher so if you want a good setup i think this is a pretty good setup here for and you anyway thank you so much for listening to me talking about fintech stocks have a good one bye